It is Ryan Cameron Uncensored. And man, he clean up in this. Man, listen. Bro, I'm clean in this. Dre, I'm clean. You, woo, man. Clean on the you, inside. You looking fresh today, bro. Clean on the outside. May Andre Dickens joins us One in the studio. One time. Got How you my feeling, pow- man? Powder blue suit with the double breasted, you know? You ready? I'm ready. I don't know what I'm going to, but I'm coming to Come RC. On, man. <laughs> Let me check y'all out here, man. Hey, I'm man. Good. Look, you've been uh, out and doing so many things. First thing I just want to talk about is the Mall West End. Yeah. Tell me how that how long did it take for that to happen cuz I know it was a process and what exactly is the is the 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 latest on what's going on with the Mall West End. Oh man, we are so happy about this. Yesterday we announced that we have closed on the Mall West End and there's a partnership between the City of Atlanta, Atlanta Urban Development, the Beltline and BRP companies and um uh Prusik Group. It's, uh, several companies all put together to make right. this 12 acre site that's going to be a cultural hub, a shopping destination as well as um you know housing and retail on the bottom. It's have a grocery store. It's going to uh, have some hotel uh, key, keys in there, a uh, 150 key hotel, affordable mixed income housing. And I mean, we, we, we put it all in there. We're going to come uh, with the, you know, amazing package to make sure that the uh, residents of Atlanta, particularly those folks in the West End area are going to be proud of what's going to come of this old shopping center. So is that include like is that a demolition? Is oh yeah, we're gonna knock the whole thing out. The whole mall is gonna be knocked down. The whole mall is gonna be knocked down, okay. and uh, we're gonna come back up vertical. It's about four hundred fifty million dollars worth of development that's gonna be there. Uh, you know, so we're talking about you know something that's gonna feel look like you know. Um, a, 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 an Atlantic Station type place, you right. know, where you got uh, retail, a live you got, work community. Yeah, live yeah. work community. It's going to have all the above. What's um, the timeline? So um, we're going to start the demolition in 2025. So yeah. you got to get all your ducks in a row in 2024. Uh, probably late 2025, we'll start uh, demolition and start, you know, making some moves on bringing it up, you know, start going vertical. Uh, some of it will deliver in 2026. Okay. Um, and the rest will deliver in 2027. So, you know, we want to make sure that the, uh, the people are proud. It took us a while. Right. This took about a year and a half to go from we want to make sure that we do something with the Mall West End. You know, it's been, you know, challenged over the years, uh, you know, as the major tenants have left. And malls are just different. You know, yeah. you know, malls, you know, we used to go to malls. Now people buy stuff online and it gets delivered to you. Uh, the only large-scale mall that we still have is Lenox uh, Square and, um, and Phillips Plaza. Right. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure that we have housing, hotel, mm-hmm. and all of those things in this place that has um, often been, um, you know, neglected. It is Ryan Cameron Uncensored. We have Mayor Andre Dickens here in the studio I'll see you bright and early on Saturday morning. Yes, indeedy. Man, Saturday morning, it is the 5K on the runway. Uh, this is a great number event. Number 10, right? Yes, yeah, number 10. Okay. This is a you know an opportunity for us to run on the fifth runway of the world's busiest airport. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're doing it for a good cause. It's to raise money for the mayor's scholarship uh, program so that young people in Atlanta can be able to get a scholarship to go to college. Some are unable to do that without this kind of money that we're going to be helping them with. So so we run and raise money at the same time. It's a it's a fun thing because you're literally running where planes land. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, RC, Ryan Cameron will be out there uh, keeping everybody energized, activated, and uh, getting running. away. Ryan? I do the post ceremony. My call time is at 6.30. You lame. <laughs> Go ahead, so you- Mayor. I was trying to get a dig in. Job, sucker. Ryan, uh, you know, he gives away the awards to the fastest runner in every category, to the biggest groups. You know, there's groups that come out and run together. So, you know, it's all fun and games. People get trophies and stuff. But really, it's just, man, an opportunity for you to run on this uh, flat runway with Delta jets out there. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's it's a great event, man, yeah. and I'm, I'm always glad to to come back in and, and and host that. I mean, you you are out there, you being busy. I'm, I tell you this off offline all the yeah. time, man. But when I say I don't know, your schedule is is pretty intense, man. Do you know where you are? You know you're at my show, right? You, <laughs> I know I'm right here, man. And uh, you know, I, I think this is your show, right? And <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> yeah um, I, I'm going all the time, man. I love the fact that. I can drive around Atlanta. I'm very, I love just, I, I love Atlanta. Yeah. I love that I drive around, but I see a lot of these houses that are just either abandoned or not what it is. And I read about the blight tax. Yeah. P- 
please explain to people what the blight tax is. Yeah, Atlanta is growing and thriving. People are moving here. Buildings are being built. Everything is just moving so fast. But there's one element of a lot of downtowns in many cities that you have blight. We have vacant and abandoned properties that are dilapidated and they're owned by somebody. They're mm-hmm. not owned by the city. They're owned by somebody. And those somebodies sometimes are conglomerate organizations, companies that just buy up property, sometimes sight unseen. Right. They may be in Las Vegas. They may be, you know, in some other city or state and they just buy up property and have no intention of redeveloping them and putting families in them. So what happens happens is they start to decay. The roof started to cave in. Grass grows up, trees and limbs breaking the windows and all that kind of stuff. Vagrants take over. We don't want that in our city. So what we're doing is we're going to tax those properties, tax those property owners at a rate up to 25 times the normal uh, rate of uh, of, of regular housing rate. And it's to incentivize them to hurry up and do something. Mm -hmm. Now, we have tax incentives that we can give you through Invest Atlanta. We have uh, the ability to help you develop it with low-cost loans. We want you to start moving because people need housing. If these companies are buying up all the housing and just sitting on them, that's reducing our uh, move-in ready housing stock. So So if we bring these houses up to production, of use, then people can move in them, therefore bringing the housing costs down. They are purposefully or unintentionally or intentionally bringing down our communities, and we say no to that. So we got a tax that we've authorized. Now we're going to start hitting them over the head and telling them, hey, here's the carrot and the stick. The stick is a higher tax. The carrot is let's develop your property into something that people will live in. And, and Ray was just talking about driving around the city. I think if you don't go into some parts of the city and then all of a sudden you just happen to be over there and you'll notice the development. It's, I was on Ponce the other day, and I haven't been on Ponce since Dugan's closed. <laughs> and the development that is over on that side of town is amazing. I mean, when we have all these problems— and people always talk about infrastructure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were talking about with the flooding from Helene and the fact that all of this water really doesn't have anywhere to go. Mm-hmm. What have you been trying to do to make sure that when we have these kind of, you know, problems with water and stuff like that, and the water, unlike where I live up in the country, it just goes down in the grass and a couple of trees may fall, but you got parking decks and sewer systems backing up. Like, what is what is your, your thoughts on how you want to make sure that, that we are prepared for that kind of stuff? Yeah, this is a complicated math and, um, you know, grounds problem to try to, you know, try to grow the city, right. but also make sure that we have the infrastructure that goes along with that growth. You don't want to be a victim of your own success, that you go all the these tall buildings, but we don't have the sewers or the water to be able to satisfy uh, all the the needs that come with that. And then you are in a city that is very hilly. Mm-hmm. Georgia, Atlanta, we're we are a hilly city, ups and downs everywhere. And at the bottom of those hills is where water likes to collect, mm-hmm. right? And so we have storm drains and all that. But think about the great infrastructure that we've put in in the past. Old Fort Ward Park. Remember, that used to flood. The Pond City Market used to be the Mm -hmm. Sears building and the uh, City Hall East. And the whole bottom floor or two floors would flood. That park, that's Old Fort Ward Park, it's not just a park. What's underneath it is a massive vault Mm -hmm. that collects all the water. If you think about Ponce and North Avenue, it's a bowl. You come down mm-hmm. from, you yep. come off of the Peach Street. Yep. Peach Street Road is high. It's a ridge. Right. Everything on either side of Peach Street goes downward, and that means the water comes downward. And then coming up uh, from Boulevard, it comes down the other way. So it's a bowl. Well, we put in, if we put infrastructure in there that's a vault that holds that water and then slowly releases it into uh, down into the viaducts, but also into the grass that's above it, which is where we hang out at on Old Fort Ward Park. Right. Same thing with Cook Park and Vine City. Those areas did not flood in Helene, which we're thankful for. We cleaned out the storm drains and all that stuff. But Peachtree Creek and Buckhead, mm-hmm. which is you know this creek, it flows, and when that much water got into it from Helene, it caused some flooding in some low lying apartments and some houses. So what we have to do is continue to look at the science and try to figure out how we can best you know prepare for um, you know more and more people coming into this metro area and. And uh, these, uh, you know, weather events that continue to be more extreme. Uh, Climate change is real. We got more severe storms and they're more often. So we have to prepare and we have to prepare now. I I read something about the city getting a new credit rating. 
Yeah. And I, I want to know what that meant. Does that mean like the city got a FICA score of 800? What, <laughs> what does that mean in terms of, of money? Yeah, man, we are super proud of this. Uh, the rating agencies, Fitch, uh, has declared that Atlanta has triple A credit, which is the highest credit that you can get. It's the highest the city has ever had. Wow. It's the highest credit rating that any city has. Uh, even the U.S. government doesn't have triple A credit rating. So we can borrow money at a lower interest rate. We we're going to be said yes to for things that we want to buy, like added infrastructure for pipes and sewers, like things we might want to do uh, on behalf of the citizens of Atlanta. We can borrow money and bond against it. It's like having an 850 credit score. It's perfect credit is what these rating agencies are saying. Not only are they saying that this administration is good at paying its bills and counting, the, you know, bean counting and doing the doing the necessary things to take care of our current infrastructure. What it's saying is that they are making a bet on Atlanta. This is looking out 20 years, 30 years mm -hmm. down the line saying, if we were a stock, this is the best stock to invest mm -hmm. in. Atlanta is the highest rated, you know, only 2% of the cities in America have AAA credit rating. So they're saying, make a bet on Atlanta. Atlanta's good money for you to put your, a good place for you to park your money. Wow. That I mean, that, that, that tells you that all these businesses that want to come here, they knew that Atlanta is a good place to, to be. And these small business owners need to think about that. Like, hey, Atlanta is the place where you want to invest. And, um, and we're, we're proud of that. Atlanta influences everything. Atlanta influences <laughs> everything. And you got a triple A credit rating to go with it. After the storm, you know, and just seeing all the, the just the damage that's happened in the vault. I'm going to say it right. Valdusta. Mm, close. Valdusta. Val okay. Yeah. Um, has Atlanta tried to, you know, uh, reach out to like just different like North Carolina and Asheville and, and Valdosta and all other stuff? Like what what's Atlanta trying to do to help with the relief with everything going on? Yeah, I mean, I've talked to a few of those mayors, you know, um, you know, Mayor of Savannah, uh, Van Johnson and others that we've called and just, you know, asked if they needed our help. They've said that the federal government has been sending the Army Corps of Engineers yeah. as well as, you know, other bodies and help to, to their way. Georgia Power is there. I mean, I thank God that the Metro Atlanta was spared. I was watching mm. that storm. It moved so slow. It mm -hmm. was moving so slow. It was directed right towards yeah. Atlanta. And then it just went around us. Mm -hmm. and it. But unfortunately, it still went to somebody's neighborhood, which yeah. is Augusta, Savannah. Right. And I feel sorry for those communities because we only lost 6% of our households in Atlanta lost power. 6%. 95% of Augusta's households mm. lost power at wow. some point. Trees fell on power lines and houses and cars. And people, there's still people. I got an email today from somebody in a whole other county saying, Mayor of Atlanta, please come to our town and help us. I'm, I've been without power. I've been charging my phone at the um, fire station, et cetera. I mean, we had all these precautions in place. We had fire stations with charging stations. We had a Georgia Power providing us things um, that we needed ahead of time. And we was cleaning out our storm drains. And, and we had cutting crews. And we cut down a lot of trees that were on power lines. I can't imagine having a storm that was five, ten times more intense than the one that we saw in Atlanta, right. Savannah, and Augusta, and uh, other places. And, and in North Carolina, Asheville is underwater, and it's not going to get out soon. Do you think because of our own water challenges that, you know, you looked at, and I remember you having press conferences and talking about what the plan was, and then you go back and you see that, you know, the, the, some of the pipes that were rusty and, and outdated, when you look forward and you say, okay, in case something like this happens again, what are the, your fail-safe methods that you put in place to say, hey, not saying if, but when it happens again, yeah. I'll be ready this time? Yeah, so we are doing a whole lot to try to get ready regarding our water pipes that, that bursted. Uh, uh, you know, we, we in Atlanta have had, you know, lack of infrastructure investment. The pipe that, you know, that, that, that uh, water main break that we had, was a hundred plus year old pipe uh, on 11th Street on 11th Street, and so now we're going and identifying all these old pipes, and we're trying to. So replace there's inspections them. going on. Yeah, there's inspections going on right now. We're doing an assessment of which pipes are old, which ones are critical infrastructure, meaning mm. it's going to Grady Hospital, it's going to <laughs> yeah. Emory Hospital, yeah. it's going to a hospital. We got to make sure that they got, you know, the best uh, in the you know possibility for success going into those places. It's going to the airport. It's going to here or there. So we're we're doing. That. That assessment and then we're doing some replacements of uh, as, uh pipes as we find them. Pop
pipes are under streets, though. So mm-hmm. as you, you know, see a problem, you got to tear up the street, replace the pipe, mm-hmm. put the street back together, pave it, which means a lot of detours and a lot of delays are headed our way, ladies and gentlemen, because we're about to be going in the ground. Right. And luckily, we're using AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got some new AI leak detectors that we're putting in the valves. Uh, nice. And we've been doing this experiment for the last two months. We got 200 of them in there, and they are finding leaks. Mm. And we're fixing these leaks. Um, and it's a way to detect it before it full-fledged breaks. So you might have a crack. You may have a, a slit, but you don't have a full breakage yet. But that break will be coming. And this this AI technology is observing it and telling us right over there you have a problem. And that problem is a scale on a one to ten. That problem is a five. It could be a ten in two or three years. Right. So, but that one right there is an eight. Go fix that now, or yeah. else you can find yourself with a big problem. Will you be at the game on Saturday? Duke the, eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be a nighttime game. That's a nighttime game in the I flat. love, man, nighttime just games. making sure you're going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm going to run a race in the morning. Yeah. I, I'm going to go out here and do all the things I need to do to be super mayor by day. Yeah. And then I'm going to be at Georgia Tech watching the Yellow Jackets beat up on the Duke Blue Devil. Yeah. Blue yeah. At, uh, yeah. Nighttime right. In the flats with the beautiful city skyline. It's going to be a great night. Man, always great to see you. We appreciate the updates as always. And boy, you clean, you clean. Got the double <laughs> press on today, boy. He's unstoppable. <laughs> Super Mayor Andre Dickens. Yeah, but I'm for him. Yeah. One time. Yeah. <laughs>